So they, they're here, they have a presence here, and they're very kind and willing to speak their opinions, uh, both uh, personally and as, as being people. They were willing to be interviewed as camera people. Uh, all the other news channels have, uh, have remained impartial and stoic. are very stoic. They're just, they have the same responses as the policemen when you ask them how they feel about what's going on. They have the same responses. Uh, as all the departments of civil authority that are out here, um, they're all just they're unable to say anything, they're unable to have an opinion, and they're unable to join the protest. Uh, so all those kind of clues together are kind of pressing us to want to get back out on the streets, uh, film what's going on in the, at the police level before. Uh, I don't believe that they're actually going to raid for another two to three hours. Uh, due to the amount of people that are out there. So we ha we're kind of in a crucial time where we want to get back out on the streets and do as much reporting as we can uh, before it goes down and we got to get out of there. Um, so that's kind of one thing that's happening right now. That's pretty much the big thing that's happening that's right the now. That's the big thing that's happening right now. Lots and mm -hmm. lots of big presents. Uh, we're, we're, the room that we're currently sitting in, um, the media. It, it, well, yeah, I believe I, I mentioned this already. It's the main media hub. Uh, we're kind of the counter organization to what's going on at the municipal level. Uh, we're trying to be as informative and um, tactical with our deployments of media as we, as we can and uh, making sure that the people on the ground uh, are able to reach out through Twitter and Facebook, um, have their cameras charged and at the ready. Uh, we're running extra generators right now. We, we beefed up the media station today um, through lots and lots of donations. Um, so we, we've been able to purchase another generator and kind of like start to build like a little actual kind of city sort of. <laughs> it's kind of impressive. Uh, with, there's a, the, there was a comfort and medical tent that was uh, added to the, the infrastructure here at the small town. Uh, people are giving away uh, what we've been drinking, all the cold flu, like uh, what's that stuff? Airborne. Airborne and those kinds of things. And, and they're right in front of uh, water bottles. So we've been grabbing a couple, tossing them in a water bottle and pretty much drinking those all day. Um, there's a lot of people here. And uh, I feel like it could be easy to get sick. <laughs> So yeah. Especially with the rain, not being able to erect a proper shelter. Yeah, not being able to sleep, all the intimidation tactics by the, by the police, uh, not being able to erect the proper shelter for the weather patterns that are going on here. So uh, we're trying our best to keep healthy so we can stay out here as long as possible. It's hard to stay dry. <laughs> I, I love McDonald's air dryer. Yes. <laughs> I dried my shoes without it today. <laughs> Which actually is an interesting thing. McDonald's has been really supportive in terms of allowing all the protesters en masse to, to just go in and use their facilities for, for the restrooms, which is one, one component of this organization. We do not have uh, Jiffy Don. We don't have, you know... Restrooms for us. Right. You have to depend on the, the buildings that are around it. Not all of the buildings are entirely receptive to the Occupy message, uh, so they are also using different tactics and keep people from to keep people from uh, feeling good. But there, there, there's definitely a light and dark energy that's happening here. There are a lot of people that are supportive in a the most intense and beautiful way. I had some of the most like amazing um, conversations today. Uh, there are also some people out there who are having very negative reactions to what's going on, uh, remain in entirely uninfluenced by, by the message of the 99% and uh, are, are kind of bitter and angry that we're here. So there's a lot of energy. It's very intense. And not to mention all the really weird sounds that go on, weird synchron synchronicities with like arrival times of helicopters, 
and really, I've been in the city before and I've heard sounds, but I haven't heard many sounds quite like this. And I think that that's just another one of their possible elimination tactics is because they want to drown out our like drumming and singing and once we stop and try to go to bed, we hear like really weird high pitched noises and like almost like rave music, uh, just like bass and kind of like uh, yeah, almost like uh, they would use in a riot, riot control. Mm -hmm. There's also been speculation, it's all that is. Yes, it is. It um, is all speculation. That uh, yeah, they're what's well, kind of like what's done saying that they're. There, they said there seems to be just unusual frequencies um, that you can kind of almost feel it in the air. It's, it's interesting. We, we walked up from the river and we couldn't locate the source of a, of, of a really kind of militant drumming sound uh, and we were never able to actually locate it. We thought that we would be the only people that are actually making those kinds of sounds, but it wasn't from us. It seemed to be emanating from a building nearby. Hmm. Um, I don't want to be too, like, conspiracy theorist. Because I think that this group is pretty steadfast. Pretty, pretty uh, solid. Um. Yeah, I uh, posted a couple months ago, I tried to start the uh, med mob thing there in Williamsport. MedMob showed up today, uh, about 300 people sat down and meditated for about an hour. Yes. Uh, we're, we're working with our friend Anya, we're trying to, uh, we're going to reach out to MedMob and see, like, because it's a global, it's a, it's a global group of people, we're going to be trying to sort of like, meditating and setting attentions through that group, uh, to sort of like, protect the energy around, mm -hmm. around us in a way, you know, just sort of like putting it out there that, that there is this kind of ominous, heavy yeah, heavy thing. energy that, that's being cast upon us uh, in, a, in a very malicious and uh, malignant way um, Good word. so it's uh, we're doing our best to report uh, we're going to try and get as many interviews as possible but we're also kind of out here uh, to really do our best and support what's going on at the fullest extent of our resources. How did the plan for you guys to decide to be a part of Occupy Wall Street uh, come about? What was your impetus? And then, and then once you all decided you were going to do this, uh, what did you think you were getting yourself into on the drive up? I was very excited at first. Um, whenever we were first in the car, I was very excited. I took a nap um, and uh, woke up in about, uh, what, like an hour, a half hour, something like that. And once we started approaching like uh, some heavy traffic, I started to get a little nervous and was actually questioning, like, what am I actually getting into? What is what is this going to end up being? Because uh, I mean, I, the first thing that I really saw, footage wise, was the police brutality, and I was really starting to question, like, what am I getting myself into? You know, um, it's very it's very uh, in between, really excited and really kind of scared and nervous, because um, this is completely new. We have no idea where this is going to take anybody. Despite being aware of the tactics that they're using, and it's kind of like, it's sort of, you think that it's kind of like looking at a horror movie, you, you, you intellectualize, you understand that it can't hurt you, and then you're not scared, but the reality here is that we probably could get hurt. We could get hurt. And uh, so you can't really think yourself out of the panic despite wanting to sort of act re regardless it, it, it has an impact yeah. yeah yeah yes definitely being even though i'm aware i mean i've always been in, intimidated by police officers in uniform and especially in nypd they're really spooky and now that like i'm their enemy it's even more spooky but, you know, soon enough they'll, soon enough they'll figure out that they should join with there, us, but... There was a chant today, yes. it was NYPD, 
you'll join us soon. You'll yeah, see. you will join us soon, you see. 